Hi everyone, my name is Carrie Catherine and I'm from Reconciliation Saskatoon and I'm really grateful to join you here on September 30th, National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about our organization and some of the work we do and then also help you find some tools and resources that you can use to deepen your own journey of truth and reconciliation. So Reconciliation Saskatoon formed back in 2016. And one of the things that we did was organize the Walk for Reconciliation. So we were really excited to gather thousands of people on the riverbank in Victoria Park in Saskatoon, people from all walks in life, to gather and walk in support of reconciliation. And as we continued the work of organizing that walk, we felt that our group around the table was really experiencing reconciliation. Here our members were different organizations, indigenous and non-indigenous, businesses, public sector, um, faith communities, all sorts of people coming together for this one cause. And we wanted to expand that sharing that we were experiencing with more people. So our next step was to build Be A Connect R. So this is an online tool, a website that lists hundreds and hundreds of calls to action that you can do to further your own journey of truth and reconciliation. I'll get into that a little bit later, but first I'll just give you a deeper understanding of what our organization is all about. Um, one of our other newer initiatives was to form small action groups each focused on a really specific area of reconciliation. So we've got a business engagement action group, a newcomer action group, youth and families. We've got a really great book club that makes sure we continue our learning. Um, we've got a healing group. And so each group focuses on those specific areas and they think, well, how can we make an impact? How can we get more people engaged in truth and reconciliation? How can we promote anti-racism? How can we raise awareness? And awareness that translates into action. So that's a little bit about Reconciliation Saskatoon. I think that one of the biggest things that we've done over the last few years is really focus on, you know, our membership, our all different organizations, um, you know, from the city of Saskatoon and the office of the treaty commissioner, two of our founding organizations, to the Saskatoon city police or the public library, the Saskatoon, or Saskatchewan health region, so there's all these various um, entities around the table. And what we're really trying to do is increase the capacity of all of our members to promote decolonization, anti-racism, um, you know, really moving forward and getting engaged in action. So in, in some uh, ways, we, we do a lot of education. We do a lot of workshops. We always have knowledge keepers and residential school survivors in our meetings in everything that we do. It's really uh, important to our organization that the voices of the knowledge keepers and survivors always inform the direction of where we're going. Um, so I'm gonna talk a little bit to you about your journey. <laughs> I think one of the most important things that we've seen over the last year especially is new faces, new voices coming forward and saying, I really need to play a larger role in truth and reconciliation in my family, in my workplace, in my community. How do I do that? And so a lot of the starting points for a person's journey of reconciliation is really about education and learning. I find in our community, there's a lot of people who want to be part of that change, but sometimes we do nothing for fear of doing the wrong thing, or we just don't know where to start. So that was part of the impetus for building Connect R. 
So what we did with ConnectR is formed a committee. Again, we had knowledge keepers, we had survivors, we engaged with youth. We really went out into the community and asked what they need. And to make a long story short, developed this tool where we have hundreds of calls to actions, things that you can do to walk that journey. We call it a journey because, you know, I think that there's really no end point that once we get involved we realize that the journey of of truth and reconciliation is is a is going to be a lifelong one and um it's not hierarchical there's there's no easy way to map out your starting point and your end point um, we learn from indigenous ways of knowing to honor the medicine wheel. And if you go to that homepage, be at connectr.com, you're going to see kind of a, an allusion to the medicine wheel. Um, and that came from our indigenous members informing us of what that journey might look like and not to be too prescriptive. Now that said, we know that a lot of people come to use this tool and they want more direction. So in addition to that medicine wheel, we also organize those calls to action under different categories so that you can see where your journey fits into your life now. So for example, there's calls to action under uh, art and music, cultural understandings, business, youth and families, um, this land. So no matter what it is you're interested in, hopefully you can find calls of action, calls to action that actually relate to you, where you are in your journey and your own interests and passions. Because in order to sustain this work, it has to be meaningful to you. So, we built that tool so that people could find a good starting point, a way in. Um, I think that what happens a lot of time is we start that learning journey and, and we, we're absorbing a lot. Um, we need to know the history of our land. We need to know the history of Indigenous peoples and culture and, and the legacy of the residential school system. We need to understand that in order to be uh, in a place where we can contribute in a meaningful way to truth and reconciliation. But sometimes I come across folks who have started their own learning path. They've read books, they've gotten engaged, and they say, now what? And I think, you know, one, one way that we need to think about our journey is why is our own learning important? Well, first of all, we, we do need to, it, it is a very personal journey. There's going to be a lot of um, different, different things that come up in your journey. I know for myself, if this is at all useful for you, I know that I've made so many mistakes. Sometimes we're afraid to make mistakes and I'm going to tell you, you know, as, as a person trying to engage in a new way of thinking, a, a way of decolonizing my own actions and thoughts and, and practices, there will be mistakes along the way. And it's important to acknowledge that. It's important to find people who are also interested in walking this path with you, partly because learning together is going to be, I think, a more fruitful journey, but also you may find times when you need that, that sense of support, somebody to debrief with, somebody to talk things through with. So finding support in your circles is going to be a really important part. Also, because then when you make those mistakes too, you have a sense of support, you have somebody to talk it out with to make sure that the learning goes deep. Um, the other thing that I, I, I see in this community of people who want to take action is to know that our learning needs to translate into a capacity to have tough conversations. So for example, um, you know, there's some fabulous books out there about, uh, one of the first books I recommend that I just love is by Bob Joseph called, I think, 21 Things You Didn't Know About the Indian Act. Now that's a fantastic read and it really 
opened my eyes. And what's important is, can I have conversations based on that learning with other people that help promote um, anti-racism, truth and reconciliation beyond just my own brain? <laughs> so a good way to think about your journey is, are you increasing your capacity to have tough conversations, to engage with your family, your peers, um, and others in a way that can really spread that learning, spread the desire to take action beyond yourself. Now, I'm going to let you take it from here. I'm going to send you off to be a connectr.com. Um, whether you're using that tool or any tool to get engaged, I really applaud you for taking that step. Um, continually ask yourself, what can I do more? What's my next step? And find that circle of support. You can always find it with Reconciliation Saskatoon too. We have monthly events. We have a monthly Let's Talk series where you can show up at 11 o'clock last Wednesday every month with myself, with Indigenous educators and knowledge keepers to just have a casual conversation about your journey. Ask questions that you're afraid to ask in other circles. Come here to experience a sense of community with Indigenous, non-Indigenous people, newcomers, all sorts of people show up at that conversation. So I hope that we can support you in your journey. We wish you well, and thanks again.